Hey, Silver Fox, what's happening? You're the first one in. How's my internet? Because it was just crappy. I had to restart my router. Is the internet good? Am I all herky jerky? Howdy. Hey, Kavuno. Shaking. Cheers. Mmm. Better? Okay, good. Looks fine, but lagging at the moment. Huh. Strange. I'm using five. Maybe I said now okay. All right. <laughs> How's the pantomime? <laughs> I guess I guess I can't do twerking tonight. I was gonna twerk tonight, but if I've got laggy internet, nobody nobody wants to see herky jerky twerking. Okay, you're back. I'm. I think I'm back. We'll see. It's up to Xfinity apparently. Like, for the amount of money we pay these stupid companies, you'd think, you'd think they could make the shit work, you know? Wait till you get 5G. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, it's not. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, welcome, everybody. This is the AI Learning Lab. Uh, if you would, feel free to share the this live if you know how to do that. I don't. And tap the screen, let people know we're here. That'll get people in. My name is Kyle Shannon. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Storyvine. I'm super into this AI stuff. Um, I've been doing this channel for, I don't know, a while now. And I've been doing these lives for a few weeks. Instead of sim racing at night, I do lives and talk about generative AI. So if you have questions about AI, pop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, Hopefully, my internet's back and I'm not herky-jerky. Um, trying to think what else is going on. Lots of new stuff happening. Mid-Journey 5.2 came out. Um, Stable Defer Diffusion XL 0 0.9 came out. Um, ChatGPT still rocks. If you haven't played with ChatGPT, these URLs behind my head. Um, the reason I put these here... The, the top one there is the official ChatGPT website. If you haven't played with it, just go start playing while you hear me ramble. And, and if you really don't know what to do, don't know where to start, that's why I put this here, this prompts.chat thing. It's like a little instruction guide and a whole pile of different um, prompts where you get ChatGPT to act like different personas. And it, and it really guides um, what it can do well, and it'll give you ideas about what it makes possible. So that's that. Bing.com is Microsoft's search engine, and if you click the chat button, that's ChatGPT4 for free connected to the Internet. So none of this ending at September 2021 nonsense. It's all connected to the Internet. It's free. Um, and then Poe.com gives you six different models you can play with. So, And then Futurepedia.io, I put that there really just as um, if you want to geek out on tools or you want to know specific tools like music tools or animation tools or writing tools that's what is there there's like 4,000 tools 3,850 of which are pieces of shit oh I also cuss so if you don't like cussing I would leave because <laughs> it's it's Friday night and I'm drinking a hot hot cup of water mmm tasty all right I don't know why I just went all Will Ferrell there but you know He's also a comedian and very knowledgeable. Get, 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 get. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I try to keep it entertaining because, you know, it's computer shit. It can get dry real quick. But if you want to know cool things like, how does ChatGPT work? I can answer that. If you want to know things like, how can you make money with ChatGPT? That's not what this channel's about. But I'll give you ideas on how you might use ChatGPT and you can go figure out how to make money with it. Um, and by the way, if anyone tells you that, like, tries to sell you <laughs> the course to make money with ChatGPT, don't spend your money on that. <laughs> Those people are idiots. Nobody knows how to make money on this stuff yet. Well, some do. The ones that are making money on it. Mm -mm. Okay. So, you should try movies, too. I was in New Jack City. I have a degree in acting, so I've done a little bit. I did mostly New York stage stuff. And but I did a little bit of movie work. I did I did uh, did some uh, New Jack City. I was uh, white boy number two <laughs> in New Jack City. 
How does it work? Do you want to start? Should we start out right out with the geeking out? All right. You sure? All right. We'll do this. Hang on. Let me get up. Got to get, get up keynote here. Hold, please. Let me flip the camera. We're going to do a little geeking out. We're going to do a little. Jane? How does ChatGPT work? Oh, look, there's, there's my board meeting deck. No, I'm not showing you my board meeting. There's the content gap and omni-channel in the pharma business. This is a lot of my business business stuff. Where is my... Here it is. Okay. So this is a presentation that I did for a thing called Creative Mornings. And that's this is sort of the, the payoff slide of the deck where, where I'm talking about... I. Where's the slide here? So that date is the day that everything changed, in my opinion. That's the day that ChatGPT launched. And so I think we are entering uh, a great renaissance. So I think these tools are going to be absolutely mind-smashingly powerful and lead us into a new era of creativity. But you want to know how this shit works, huh? Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so... Let me make this window a little smaller so we can all see it. And I'll just, I'll sort of doink it back and forth here. Okay, so, so ChatGPT. One of the big misconceptions about ChatGPT and things like MidJourney and Stable Diffusion is that um, they're copying and pasting, you know, parts of documents, right? You hear a lot of people going, oh, they're stealing. The, the robots are stealing. The robots are not stealing. Um, so, so we'll start with what does GPT mean? GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And the generative part is it's generating original content. It's actually generating word-by-word -word original content. Pre-trained means it's been pre-trained on if essentially all of the internet, all the public internet, or as much as they could get to uh, in the amount of time they had to put it together. And then Transformer is the transformer technology that Google invented in 2017. So even though ChatGPT is new and it seems like everyone's just talking about it now, it's this has all been in development. You know, machine learning and neural networks have been around for decades. The transformer was invented by Google in 2017. OpenAI, you know, jumped on that and created GPT-1 and then GPT-2. Nobody really cared about them. Then they um, launched GPT-3, and all of a sudden people were like, uh, this is looking interesting. And um, then in November, uh, they did GPT-3.5 uh, or, you know, ChatGPT. They launched ChatGPT. Um, and now everyone's lost their mind. So that's what GPT stands for. Now, you're, you'll also hear large language model. The large language model is basically that, that core model that's been trained on all of the internet. It's the thing that lets ChatGPT do what it does. Um, and then you're also going to hear about something called the latent space. Well, you might not hear about it, but this is how it works. So there's this stuff called the latent space, which is a mathematical representation, for lack of a better term, of the locations of the meaning of words. So, so the, the graphic that I'm showing you here is like a simple two-axis XY coordinate. And all those clusters of dots are... Um, numbers that represent different words that are clustered by semantic meaning, right? Clustered by meaning, right? So those are semantically related words. So for example, you might have the word dog, and in one of the clusters, the words dog are like animals and, you know, the fluffy thing we pet. And in another area, dog might mean that awful man that didn't treat his lady well, right? So, so you can have the same word can have multiple meanings and live in different semantic regions. Now, the real mathematical space is thousands of dimensions. Like, it's incredibly complicated. It's incredibly huge. You know, imagine training on all of the internet. Okay, so how does it actually work? Basically, what happens is when you put in your prompt, it converts that into a mathematical probability and says, based on all of the words that were typed in that prompt, what is the next most likely word that I should type, you know, in response to that? And so it kind of works like this. If, if our prompt is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy blank, we know the answer's dog because we have a brain and the brain works. Well, how does the um, large language model neural network brain work? Well, what it does is it, it, it effectively deselects all the stuff that is not 
in, in that semantic region. And there's some little light blue dots here. You might not be able to see them, but these little light blue dots are all things that might have, you know, some decent probability of filling in that sentence. And there's going to be one of those words that says 96%. There's going to be one of those words that has the highest probability of being the right word. And if you look at what's in the database or in the, in the vector database, it's actually just a string of numbers that represent that location in vector space. And then that number is associated with a word, and in this case, the word is dog. And so it puts the word dog in that sentence as a response. And right, there's other things that had other probabilities, but dog had the highest probability. And that's how it works. And it does that word after word after word. So when you see it write you a whole song or write you a marketing plan or create a table or write you code, this is how it's doing it. Word by word with math mathematical probability, it has no idea what this word means. It has no idea what it's actually writing, but it's so sophisticated that it looks like it does. Whew! That was pretty intense to start out with. You know, not for nothing. How does ChatGPT work? Come on, but I'm here for you. We got it. What do you think? Cool? All right. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you have thoughts, questions about uh, AI, uh, Anything you want to ask, pop them down below, and I will um, do my best to answer them. In a small town, and I've been talking to small business owners about learning AI. Actually, what would be what would be cool is, um, and maybe maybe this is what you mean is is start teaching them, like do courses or or do work for them. Like like one of the things that I've been doing in the past three or four months is I, I I've just put myself in this just say yes mode, where I'm just saying yes. Like, like someone says, oh, let's collaborate on something. Yep, let me do that. Let me help you figure that thing out. Let me build something. Let me do this. Let me do that. Um, it's completely exhausting and it's completely burning me out. But <laughs> we're at a singular point in history. Um, you only get to participate at the beginning of a technological transformation like once. And it's like once, usually in a generation. In my life, there have been three major ones. There was the personal computer, which I was too young for. I was in seventh grade when I got my ha hands on one of those. And I was acutely aware that ah, I just missed one of those big technological revolutions. I was there for the World Wide Web. I started one of the first digital agencies in 1994. Grew it really big, like, like, like rode that up. That was insane. It was wild. It was amazing. And I didn't think I'd have another one in my life. These things don't come along that often. And it's, it's here, 2022, 2023. Um, this is the first year of a new inflection point. These are the most powerful tools ever put in kind of the hands of the masses. Um, and, and it's going to change a lot. It's going to be quite profound. So, so I feel like we're very, very lucky. We're very lucky to be here. Um, so anyway, so that's why this channel exists. I want to demystify this stuff. I want to inspire you. Hopefully make you laugh a little bit. Uh, maybe learn a little bit. Um, I'm certainly not expert at this. Anyone who tells you they're an expert at any of this is full of shit. Uh, wait, total, hang on. There's an important distinction. The, the people that I'm talking about that are, that are not experts right now are people saying all the chat GPT stuff, all the generative AI stuff that's been sort of November 30th, 2022 forward. Nobody's expert at that. There are lots of experts at machine learning and computer science and neural networks and all that sort of stuff. There's decades of expertise there. What I'm talking about is, okay, now that these tools are in the hands of the rest of us, how do we use those? That's, that's where I'm really interested. So having started a bunch of companies, that's the kind of thing that really excites me and I like putting my time and, and energy into and that's where I feel like there's a lot of people right now going, I'm an expert at prompting. I'm an expert at making money at ChatGPT. You should hire me. I can tell you everything. No, no one can tell you everything. Um, so sometimes if you ask me questions in here like, how do I do this? Um, I'll often just say, just go there and start playing, which I know is a frustrating answer. But I think it's actually important to start learning how to use these things and how to how to think about interacting with them because it's not like Google. It looks like Google, but it's not like Google. Quick question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, is there a ChatGPT plugin for Python? You don't need a ChatGPT plugin for Python. I'll show you. My shirt is intense. Love it. Thank you very much. Um, 
let's see. Oh, yes, I'm teaching them and asking them what what they want their future to be, and I help. That's super cool, Silver Fox. Keep doing that because it's, I mean, it'll help you learn. Um, it'll, it'll keep you educated and, and, you know, you'll get better and better at problem solving, but it's also going to help them. I think that's really awesome. Um, is there a chat GPD plugin for Python? Well, actually there might be, let's, let's go look. Okay. I'll, and I'll show you about plugins because we, we talked about how chat GPT works. Let's go look at plugins and I'll, I'll give you a quick little primer on plugins if you haven't played with them. So where I'm going right now is chat.openai.com. And that's the official ChatGPT website. Okay, so if you're new to ChatGPT, to get to the plugins, you have to be a ChatGPT Plus member. I was logged out of Mint Defense. Okay. Um, and then you get access to it. The other thing that you need to do to get access to plugins is you need to turn on um, your beta features. So you go to your settings. And then within your settings, you go to beta features and then you enable browse with Bing and plugins. So you have to turn those on first or you won't see them. And that can be confusing. Okay. Um, then we go to plugins. So the way plugins work, they're, they're a little confusing. So with ChatGPT in general, you just type your shit down here and it answers your question in the, in the window. Plugins are, are little extensions and it, the, the, the software kind of figures out is what that person asked something that this plugin could help with? And if so, then fire off the plugin. That's kind of how they work. Um, you, you pop open this little list and you've got the list of your installed plugins. In any given chat session, you can able, enable up to three of them, but you can install a bunch. But for any given chat session, you enable three. Um, to get to new plugins, you scroll to the bottom and you go to the plugin store. There are now, I think, 500 and... 50 or something like that. There's a lot of them. So if I go to all here, there are 139 pages of four each. This will create Spotify playlists for any prompt. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's look up Python. Create notebooks in Python, SQL, and Markdown and explore data, visualize, and share notebooks with everyone. Um, notable. I don't know Notable. That's probably just a website, but I'll go. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got I've got a. The best Jupyter Notebook alternative. Yeah, I'm not going to create a new account for this. Some of the plugins are really just sort of gateways to other websites. So there's not a uh, Python plugin, but ChatGPT knows Python. Like this was my, my big epiphany with ChatGPT. Um, I, so let's say um, write, write, uh, sorry, I'm typing. Typing while talking is not good. <laughs> Oh, wait, someone else. So, no, I'm not going to do it. Okay. I, I could speak it in, but I don't know how to turn it off because I'm an old man and I haven't figured that shit out yet. Okay. Uh, write a Python application that um, refactors, um, I don't know, uh, the squares of prime numbers, numbers, and graphs them on an X, Y axis. I don't even know if that's possible. I'm not good at math. I know some math words. <laughs> sure, here's a Python application that does that. So it's gonna import the matplotlib library and simpy, and then it's gonna do some shit. And then it says this script generates the first 100 prime numbers, squares them, and then plots the prime numbers on the X axis and and there's squares on the y-axis. You can adjust the nut, da 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 And then note that you have to install the Met. So it tells you, like it gives you instructions on what to do. Um, you can, and it basically you can just go on and on like this, right? You can um, take existing code, have it decode it. It can read code, it can translate code. So if you've got some application in some other language, you can translate that to Python. So it's, it's pretty remarkable. Um, there's a question there about when did AI really start? Let's go ask the chat GPT. When did AI really start? It's, I, like, I think you could argue probably in the sixties was the first neural network, right? Start question mark. 
A long and complex history. Yeah, coined artificial intelligence was coined in 1956 at the Dartmouth Co- Conference where researchers gathered to explore the possibility of creating machines that could simulate human intelligence. The foundations are even older, so 40s and 50s devices and algorithms that could perform tasks resembling hu- human intelligence. 60s and 70s people they developed expert systems, right, which which were um, sort of hard coded versions of this. Da, 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 da. 2000s and on, onward. So it was coined in the 50s and then really kind of caught, you know, they, they, they started building all the neural networks and shit like that in the, in the late 90s and early 2000s. So it's been, it's been around for a while. Like I said, there's, there's some real parallels between the early days of the World Wide Web and, and what's going on with generative AI right now. So in, when, I, when I kind of discovered the web in 94, the Internet had been out for decades, right? But it was mostly researchers and scientists and shit like that. And then Tim Berners-Lee creates the World Wide Web and all of a sudden, you know, normal people can like make these websites. And then the websites, you don't have to type in command lines. You can just click on these blue links, hyperlinks. Woo. And if you click on that hyperlink, it takes you over to another document. And that document could be all the way on the other side of the world. And all of a sudden, that that little simple ability like, you know, Steve Jobs with the iPhone, like this is the this is the best input device. Right. So that's what the World Wide Web was. Similarly, machine learning and AI has been around for a while. Like AI is in all of the software that we use. It's been in it for years and years and years. What's different is ChatGPT made a simple little like this kind of interface for machine learning. And, it, and it's pre-trained on all of the Internet. Right. So it's incredibly smart. We don't have to figure out which data to give the machine. It's already got all the data. All we have to do is ask it for what we want, and then it goes pring and gives you the answer. Um, just remarkable. Um, which can open a, oh, can open AI write a book? Yes, and in fact, um, go check out a project. This is really cool. Go check out a project called GPT Author. GPT Author. It's a GitHub. So if you know how to use a Google Colab notebook, there's a Google Colab notebook there. It's not that hard to run. You just push play buttons. Um, but um, you give it you give it a topic, and then you give it a genre, and and you give it a writing style, and then it will it uses stable diffusion to generate a cover. It generates an outline, and then it writes a chapter for X number of chapters. You tell it how many chapters you want, and then it goes and writes you a book. It's it's insane. So yes, it can. And and how it's doing that is is it's it's not sort of it's not a single prompt that just says go write a book. It's doing it in this procedural way, right? Take the topic, incorporate the writing style, incorporate the genre. Um, come up with a title, come up with an outline. Now that you have the outline, you know, write the first chapter. Now that you've written the first chapter, write the second one, right? And so it, it goes through this process. You can actually watch it building building the book. You're going through the steps. And then after, I don't know, five minutes or so, it's like there's a file and you just click on it and it, it opens in uh, like an ebook reader and you can read your book that was just written for you. So, but you can do that yourself too. Like that's one of the things that you could do at ChatGPT. If you've got an idea for a book, start with the outline, have it help you write the outline. Or if you've got the outline, have it come up with new characters or whatever it might be. Um, Really interesting. I'm demoing GPT in my media classes, trying to show the good and the bad tips to describe the hallucinations. Um, Yeah. So, so, so. I, I, th- this is not for me. I'm stealing this from Andre, Andre Karpathy, who's who's one of the co-founders of OpenAI. So, so the inventors of this shit. I'll give you the metaphor. So here's the metaphor that really that, that popped into my head as I heard him talking about this. <sighs> okay. So the 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 base large language model that sits underneath ChatGPT, 
GPT 3.5 or GPT 4, was trained on all of the data of the internet, right? As far as the eye can see, all of that data for the past 30 or 40 years, whatever is accessible on the net, they tried to capture as much of that as they could and just train the thing on that. So that's the core learning. What Andre Karpathy was talking about, he was talking at the Microsoft Developers Conference, and he said, he said, if you ask ChatGPT to solve a very specific math problem, it's going to look at all of the internet, and it's going to figure out, where do I have answers to that math problem? And it's going to look over here, and over here is a professor that is an expert in that math problem, and he's going to have the right answer. And then over here are a bunch of students that also answered that math problem, and they got it wrong. And there's like 30 of them, and there's one of him, right? Um, and so if you just say solve this math problem, it basically sort of averages in all of the data it knows that are kind of semantically related to that question, and it'll solve the math problem. And if it pulls in more of the student answers than the, the professor answers, you're going to get a wrong answer. So because it's just doing word probability, like word by word, you write a long prompt and then it says, what's the next most prob probable word and the next most probable word and the next one, because it's doing it word by word, it has no concept of what it actually wrote. So, so it's, it's like, it's, it's like Rain Man, like it's incredibly intelligent in its output, but it has, it's got like no, you know, concept of what it actually did. So what he said is you need to narrow the semantic, um, um, vectors, the, the corners of this mathematical, you know, language space that you're in. And here, here's the metaphor that I came up with. Pretend you're in a helicopter over the Grand Canyon. And if you go really high up, you can see in all the nooks and crannies, all the little mini canyons. So you can see, and, and in the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon is filled with all of the knowledge of the internet. And the, if you're really high up in the helicopter, you see everything, right? And so if you ask a really generic question like solve this math problem, the helicopter is really high up, so it'll get the crappy answers as well as the good ones. But if you say, GPT, I want you to act like a Stanford math professor that specializes in this branch of mathematics, and I want you to solve this problem, it's like you're lowering the helicopter into one of these canyons, into one of these little small sub-canyons, and the only thing that's in there semantically is professors answering that problem correctly. So you'll get a much better answer if you, if you sort of narrow it. So that, that's what I would, that's the way I'm understanding why it hallucinates. And the other thing that's weird is be, because it's been programmed to kind of talk like a human, you kind of think like it kind of is sentient and it kind of knows what it's talking about. But it is just a calculator that is doing probability auto-completion. Um, it just happens to be like the, the most powerful tool ever in the history of mankind, right? It's like, it's like having a really incredibly smart intern that has no life experience. You have to tell it everything to do. But if you ask it about some obscure topic, it'll know about it right? It's, it's, it's really quite remarkable that way. And that's a big, uh, that was a big shift for me, shifting from Google searching where like a Google search is a very particular kind of thing. It's like you put in a very concise sentence and then you get back a big list of answers. And if you get good at Googling, you know, you don't have, to, you can hit it in the first shot and it gives you back what you need, right? So they kind they, they kind of over the past two decades have taught us, um, write short and concise, and we'll give you all the answers. ChatGPT kind of sucks at that. But what ChatGPT is really good at is you go, all right, I'm going to actually start a conversation with this thing, and I'm going to give it a lot more context than seems reasonable. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm thinking about writing a book, and gosh darn it, you know, I've got a few ideas, but I'd sure love your help. Like, like you find yourself talking to it like that. And then it'll respond, hey, awesome, you know, would love to help you write a book. What are you thinking about? What's, you know, who's the main character? Oh, well, the main character is this. That back and forth, the more you give it back and forth, the more context it understands, the better it gets. And, and so you can kind of, you, you, can, you can narrow the hallucinations. And, and I don't know if you can eliminate them because it doesn't know what it's doing. So if you're doing something like writing a legal brief, check your fucking work. Like two weeks ago, there was a <laughs> there was a lawyer that um, he gave the judge um, 
a chat GPT written legal brief and didn't proof it. And the judge was like, all of these citations are bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and the lawyer was like, well, sir, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what to do. Right? So, all right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, we just talked about hallucinations. Claude, I think, is a writer of books. Well, Claude, so let me show you one other thing here. Um, so if you if you're... Uh, thinking of wait am I here no okay if you're thinking of writing a book or doing something long form or even analyzing a book you could have you could have this tool um, read a manuscript you've written and help you edit it so if you go to poe.com so this is one of the the websites that I, I think is worth paying attention to um, it's just like a normal uh, chat GPT like engine it's got all these different models here sage is 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 there um, their chatbot, GPT-4, Claude Plus, Claude Instant 100K, Claude Instant, and ChatGPT are also available. But but these uh, the ones that say subscription access, you've got to pay for to, to have access to them. But this one right here in particular is really, really interesting. So it's called Claude Instant 100K. That means 100,000 token context window. What that means practically is that you can put 75,000 words in your prompt. So you could literally copy and paste a novel manuscript of, you know, 50,000 word novel and then say, um, I don't know, find inconsistencies in my plot line. And it will, <laughs> you know, um, rename this character to that. And instead of them being an air conditioner repairman, um, I want them to be to work in a chocolate factory, and it will just rewrite that shit. Um, so, so it's remarkable. I put in, I put in. Um, is it still here? Yeah, it is. I put in the entire um, 2001 Space Odyssey screenplay. So all of this text up here is is the screenplay for 2001: A Space Odyssey. So I just pasted it in. And if you've ever tried to paste in a long document into ChatGPT, it just breaks. It's like, I can't do it. I'm too exhausted. But this thing will just chew through it. And it, it reads it in like, I don't know, 20 seconds. And then what did I ask? I said, what are some, what did I say? I said, who are the main characters and what happens to them? Dave Bowman. He's an astronaut in the Discovery mission to Saturn. Frank Poole is his crewmate. The computer, HAL 9000, starts malfunctioning and predicts failures. So, you know, it reads the whole screenplay. It knows what's going on. And here's some interesting things that HAL said to Dave. Um, let's see. Um, when HAL says he's sorry to Dave, what is it in reference to... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it lost. Oh, my context was cleared. Eh. So I wonder. Mm. Uh, anyway, all right. I cleared my context. I should probably put in a Monty Python script. I think that would be a lot of fun. All right, so that's Poe. Poe could help you write a book because you can put so so damn much in there. Oh yeah. Hey, Kool-Aid. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? One, two, two. Any Gen Xers? <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 some comments in this live were filtered to protect the community's experience. Don't be nasty in here, please. Um, do you need GPT-4 for plugins? You need to pay for GPT plus for plugins, which gives you access to GPT-4 and plugins. So I think, I don't think you can use plugins with GPT 3.5, but I don't know. That's incredible. I'm not sure what's incredible, but something I just showed. Oh, maybe the Python thing. I asked it to add comments in, ah, TikTok. Um, I asked it to add comments to my Python code. That was my Kevin McAllister moment. So yeah, so on these lives I've been saying, it, you owe it to yourself to play with Chat GPT until you have the Home Alone moment. 
like everyone that I know that pushes past the skepticism and the, you know, and the, uh, it's not perfect and actually starts playing with it has this moment. <laughs> and, and commenting code is amazing. We did, I was for, for my company, we've got an app and, and, um, we had a, a an iOS developer who was he he was good but he was young right so he wasn't super experienced and so for one device one particular uh, model of iPhone it was just the app was just crashing we couldn't get get it past a certain thing and he tried for like two weeks to solve this thing and it it was just this obscure weird little bug we couldn't crack it and I said. Why don't you try ChatGPT? And he's like, you know, like like developers. I'm not gonna let the robot do my coding. I'm a genius. And so he pasted the, <laughs> pasted the code into ChatGPT, and it was it was there were just it was a typo, right? There were there were um, two characters. It was a parentheses and a period that were swapped, right? And he goes, well, I don't think that should. Blah, 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 blah. So he, so he compiles the code, launches the app, and it fixes the bug. It's like it's 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 just fucking remarkable. It's really good at analyzing other stuff. Um, yeah. So the Kevin McAllister moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean maybe that's it. Maybe that's my new thing. Play with ChatGPT until you have your home alone moment. And then at that point, then you can decide if you want to hate it or not. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, ba 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 ba. So what made AI blow up recently? Great question. Okay. So. There were some murmurs um, probably two years ago now. Um, OpenAI launches um, GPT-3, which was a really good, it, you know, it was, it was kind of the precursor to ChatGPT. It's, it's the underlying model that was the first one that started giving results that were like, holy fuck, this is better than we thought it would be. And so that made a little bit of noise. Right around that time, Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion came out with their models where you could start making these cool images. And and they very, very quickly went from kind of laughably bad to like pretty good, except, you know, people had hands with like eight fingers on them. And, you know, they they looked a little cartoony. They didn't quite look right. And then within a within a year, like from like 20 2022 in the spring to 2023 in the spring, it went from like laughably bad to, you know, fucking mind blowingly good. Like the, the current mid journey and a lot of the stuff being done on stable diffusion is just mind blowing. In fact, that image uh, that's behind me, that was a stable diffusion thing I did with Dream Booth. Um, so, so it, it was starting to kind of emerge as this interesting thing. And then in um, probably about a year, you know, in, in spring of 2022, and maybe even before that, Microsoft starts working with OpenAI and they start working together. And so, you know, you sort of come around to October of 2022 and Microsoft's getting ready to announce their billion dollar investment in OpenAI and and. Sam Altman wanted something to be able to show to the public, like, here's what this thing is. And they didn't have anything. It was everything was for developers. So so this is an interesting tidbit. In the documentation of GPT-3 were the instructions to make ChatGPT. And Sam Altman had assumed that someone would make it and no one made it. So so like like with with a month to go before Microsoft is going to make this announcement of their billion dollar investment. Sam Altman says to his tech team, you have two weeks to put together ChatGPT. So they put together ChatGPT in like two weeks or a month, whatever it was. Microsoft makes their, their big announcement of a uh, billion dollar investment in OpenAI. They launch ChatGPT. ChatGPT went from zero to 100 million users in six weeks. It went to a million users in five days. And it went to 100 million users in, in six weeks. And then, you know, within a month, Microsoft said, okay, now we're investing $10 billion. They started with a billion, they upped it to 10, and they basically committed to roll OpenAI throughout their tech stack, right? They're, they're incorporating it in Microsoft Word. They own GitHub. It's Copilot there. They're building it into Windows 11. So, so ChatGPT becomes the fastest adopted technology in history, 
from like November to mid January, um, Microsoft makes this big announcement and Google freaks the fuck out because A, they invented the technology, the transformer that's sitting underneath all of this tech. They invented it. But I think they kind of slow rolled it because I think what they recognized is that a tool like ChatGPT would fundamentally threaten the, the, the search business. So through a series of, of different announcements and things like that, Google is, is basically trying to play catch up right now. So they've got Bard, which is like ChatGPT, but it's not anywhere near as good. Um, Meta came out and said, hey, we've got AI too. And they launched a bunch of their models and they actually gave the, their Llama model, the core model, to the developer community who basically just turned it loose on the world. So now you've got all these open source models <laughs> that, are, that are based on, on this Llama stuff that Meta gave out. Um, AWS has announced that they've got something, right? And Apple hasn't announced it yet, but they're going to be coming in probably with a bang. So, so it was a combination of the tech is really remarkable and ChatGPT got to 100 million users so quickly that everybody freaked out. Everybody, like all the companies were like, we got AI, no, we got AI, use our AI. So, so that's, that's what made it blow up. And, and now it's just, it's be, be, because of that inflection point being so like white hot, it's way more than hype because you've got, you know, at this point, probably a couple of hundred million users using ChatGPT. You've got all of the development com community, startup, startups, investors, you know, everyone's saying, what's your AI plan, right? Like AI is everywhere. And these tools happen to be remarkably capable. So they're, like there's just this convergence of all these things that happened. And that's why it, it just feels like it showed up overnight. But the foundations have been sitting there for six, seven years, probably, you know, more like two decades, really. Um, a chatbot is so much easier than more complex interfaces of the past. That's that's a great point. Like that's to me, your your comment. What's your name? Tired Runner. Uh, awesome name. I am loving <laughs> if, if I do nothing else but attract people with awesome screen names, I, I will be happy. Um, tired Runner. That's good. That's solid. I'm a non-runner, so I'm, I'm in, in the neighborhood with you. Um, I think the most significant thing that these large language models do is simplify the complex. I think it's, I think it's the thing that they do. I can paste an entire screenplay into that Poe 100K bot and just say, write me a log line. Who are the main characters? What are the plot points? You know? What happens in Act 1? What happens in Act 2? Like, you can just start interrogating that data. You can also do the same with complex systems, right? So, you, you, know, imagine, you know, imagine in the future you've got an agent where you just say, hey, go deal with my insurance company, go deal with, with uh, booking the doctor appointment and, you know, ordering my stuff at the pharmacy and make sure that my deductible's covered and, and like, whatever, the, all the bullshit that takes you, like, 10 hours of your weekend where at the end of it you want to smash your face into a brick wall it's going to be able to do that shit like it's going to be able to just take that complex shit and do it and that's what it is that's what it is that's the Kevin McAllister moment when you realize I didn't know it could do that I showed this. I'll t I've told this story in the lives before, so if you've heard it before, sorry, but but it's it's a really good story. I was I was teaching at a my my co-founder's son uh, goes to a, a school and they wanted to learn about generative AI with the images, right? So I was teaching them how to do images, and they're <laughs> they're like it's it's a it's a non-traditional school, so it's for it's for kids that like me have ADHD and all sorts of you know you know neurospices as they call them, and so they're just pinging off the walls and. They're like, make pictures of boobies. I'm like, no, no, don't make pictures of boobies. So after like two hours of this, I'm, I'm sort of packing up my stuff. And this one kid goes, hey, um, I'm making a, uh, I'm writing an application. I'm like, are you? I said, what, what are you writing? He goes, yeah, it's in C sharp. I'm like, oh, that's cool. He goes, yeah, I'm making a clone of Flappy Birds. I'm like, wow, that sounds pretty fun. He goes, yeah, I got a bug in the code. So I think I got to throw it out. <laughs> It's like a 10-year-old. He was, he was cool. Too cool for school. So I said, 
I said, have you tried ChatGPT to, to help you, you know, fix that? Ah, yeah, yeah, I use ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm like, well, here, come here, let me show you something. So I, I pop open ChatGPT on my laptop, and I say, write a C-sharp. Here, I'll do it for you now, because it's wild. <laughs> it's just it's fucking wild. Uh, 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 uh. So go to ChatGPT. We'll just go to 3.5 because it's easy. Um, write me a C sharp application that is a Flappy Birds clone uh, that will run in Unity. Bang. So, so I did that. <laughs> and it did that. <laughs> and this kid... Did the Kevin McAllister thing? He literally went. He goes. He goes. I gotta get my laptop. He ran down four flights of stairs, came back up. He's like, <laughs> so. So he said, "Get out your code that's broken," and um, we copied and pasted his code into ChatGPT. Said, "Is there a problem here?" He had a typo in it. So I said, now copy and paste that over to Unity. Copy it into your project. So he copies it into his project, and it runs. And, and it's Flappy Birds. And he start, he's playing Flappy Birds. And then he stops, and he looks at me, and he goes, this changes everything. It's like, it's just this awesome fucking moment, right? This was his Kevin McAllister moment. Really cool. That's what it can do. That's what it does. All right. Um, thanks for showing the, the Zoom in mid-journey. Sure, I can, I can also show that in here. I heard about the legal brief. I know the legal brief. It's so funny. Like people, I, the thing that bugged me about the reporting on the legal brief story is they're like, you know, AI created a legal brief that had, you know, false things in it. No, no. A lawyer used a tool to create something that had shitty work in it and he didn't proofread his work. That was the story. Not that AI fucked it up. <laughs> I love the Poe iOS app Very easy to use Wow, cool, I don't know what I showed But that's cool This is going to change my life That's cool, James, tell me what you do I'd, I'd love to hear I'm obsessed I know, it is This is. Once you have this moment Then you have this moment Okay, I gotta, I gotta use it for this I'm gonna use it for this Oh, yeah, oh, oh uh, Sally needs flowers We could use ChatGPT to figure out which flowers to get Which, what do the flowers represent in the world? Uh, we, we can figure out what metaphors the, it's, it's like it's, it's like those movies Where you got the crazy guy with like the All the pictures on the wall with the yarn Trying to connect the conspiracy theory That's totally what it's like trying to figure out Like all the shit you can do with, with ChatGPT And all these tools They're just all fucking mind blowing <laughs> So um, all right, let me, if you, uh, yeah, we've just got the, it looks like we got the core group of people in here. Do me a favor, if you would just double tap the screen, uh, so we let people know this is going on. And if you're willing to share, share the live with, with your folks so we can get some other folks in here. And then I will go answer some other questions. Gen X here, love the commercial, love that commercial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> two. <laughs> um, ask ChatGPT how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Let's do that. That's a solid one. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? By the way, Gen Xers. Have you bought a Tootsie Pop recently? They used to be like the size of your fist. And then it, it, it was like a whole Tootsie Roll in the middle. Now they're like the size of, they're like a little microscopic little, like you pay $17 and you get one little speck of shit that gets caught in between your teeth. Jesus. All right. What's the answer? The famous advertising campaign Tootsie Pops asked the questions, how many licks does it take to get instead of a Tootsie Pop? The answer to the question can vary upon uh, uh, can vary depending on factors such as individual licking technique. This is getting very saucy. Size and consistency of the Tootsie Pop. <laughs> uh, numerous sto studies and experiments. Ba -da 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 -da. The only way to do it is to figure it out for yourself. That's not the answer. A few dozen to several hundred. No, it takes two. 
That was the comedy. All right. Have you found any new plugins worth taking a look at? Um, I showed Instacart. If you haven't seen Instacart, it's cool because it's, it's visually interesting. Um, there's one called Stories that writes kids' books, but the, the, the prompting that they do for the images is pretty shitty. And, the, like, the titles are pretty shitty. So I haven't... It's, it's interesting what it does, but it's not good. Um, I played with one today that was bad, but I, it was really interesting. Um, there was one called Rewriter that would rewrite the... the um, it would take the copy from a website and rewrite it for you, which I thought was kind of clever. But then the last paragraph is a link to, if you want help doing shit like this, click here to go to our ad agency. So it's a plugin that was an ad for an ad agency, which I thought was pretty clever. So I might steal that. Uh, but no, the, the plugins, I mean, there's like almost 600 of them now. A lot of them are just kind of fly-by-night little pieces of shit that were just tossed together by someone over the weekend. Um, so it's so they're just a mess right now. So as I as I as people experiment with them and find good ones, I go play with them. But yeah, not not really much yet. I've been on the waiting list for more than two months. Is there another way to get GPT four? Yes, 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 yes. So if you pay there, you get to you if you pay for ChatGPT plus at OpenAI's website you get ChatGPT4. If you're talking about the um, API access to GPT4, I still don't have access to it. And I'm cranky about it. I want GPT4 API access, and I want Code Interpreter, and I want it now. <sighs> um, but I don't have it. But if you just want access to ChatGPT4 to play with, just pay for ChatGPT+, or... Go to Bing.com, and that is GPT-4 that you can uh, that's connected to the internet. So click on the chat button when you go there, and that's GPT-4. Um, so Bing is free. Um, OpenAI.com is not free, but OpenAI.com's GPT-4 is better right now. I will introduce you to a crypto leader on TikTok who would benefit from something. Okay. Um, read my question, please. Okay, Paul, I'll get to it. <laughs> Generative AI jobs listings have increased already 20%. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to start, that's going to start uh, going up. Paul, he gets to them all. Did you have another question up here, Paul, that I missed? Please tell me I didn't miss Paul's question. What's Paul going to do? I don't know. Paul was very upset. I think he was crying. Was that a tear? I think he might have been sweating. I don't know. Um, I don't see your question, Paul, but let me, let me go down. Maybe it's below where you said answer my question, please. Do, 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 do. Did I miss a bunch of questions? Mm, 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 mm. Paul, oh, you put a bunch of smiley faces, and then I don't see a question, Paul. Paul, this could be user error. I'm, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm afraid I can't do that. Uh, 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 uh. I still see no Paul questions. Still see no Paul questions. Oh, Paul. <laughs> Read my question, please. Okay, what's your question, Paul? <laughs> oh, no. Now just jump me to the bottom again. God damn it, TikTok. Ah! You do Friday night. Watch some old man try to find questions and TikTok scroll. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, if you have questions, pop them in the comments. And like Paul's, I'll try to get to it. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba Bow! Generative AI jobs listings. Read my question, please. Okay, we're back to Paul's thing. ChatGPT can't make me a pizza. It can't, but <laughs> it will soon be able to. ChatGPT can order you all the ingredients for a pizza or a frozen pizza from Instacart and have it delivered to your house. 252. Don't know what that means. Shrinkflation. Like that. Womp womp. Hey, Paul. Let's get rid of... Clarence and steal all his good ideas. Paul, I don't see a question from you here. I'll answer your question, but I, you, don't, you ain't got one. All right. 
Do you know if it's possible to use Claude Instant 100K on your own website? Well, so I haven't played with Anthropic's APIs, so I would assume if you go to Anthropic.com, so they're the they're the ones that build Claude. I don't know their API policy. Like, I don't know if there's a wait list for their API, but I assume you get in their developer program, you get access to their API. And I assume you can get access to Claude 100K because Poe got access to it. And I don't think Poe ha- has, I assume Poe's just, you know, developing shit. So, um, can you talk about the code interpreter more? I don't know a ton about it, but so, so what it's going to look like is what you can do is go to YouTube and search for code interpreter chat GPT. Um, but I'll show you where it's going to live. So I've, I've seen it. So, so if you've got access to the beta applications for GPT four, you've got default browse with Bing and plugins code interpreter is going to be another mode, right? Another option here. And then what happens is, Next to your send a message, there's a little upload icon, and you can upload a like a a spreadsheet, um, or I assume maybe even put in a URL for a, a spreadsheet. And then I think it can be up to I think I remember it can be up to a hundred megabytes, which is, which is not massive, but a hundred megabyte spreadsheet. It's a fair amount of data. But basically, you upload files to this thing; it interprets them all. And then you interact with it, and it's a full-on data analyst. Like, you can say, write me a report about the data in this spreadsheet. And it will write you a report. It'll generate Python code to create charts and graphs. And and then you can say, find me some anomalies in the data. And it will do that. And you can, like, like you can just interrogate the data in all sorts of crazy ways. Um but but if you want to see like like watching YouTube videos of data analysts who have access to Code Interpreter, like you watch these data analysts have their Kevin McAllister moment. They're like, <laughs> because it's not a tool for data analysts. It is a data analyst. It's insane. And the fact that I don't have access to it makes me so sad. It makes me so sad. My fam and friends think I'm crazy when I talk about AI. I'm glad I can tune into your lives. I know, my friends and family think I'm fucking toast. Because they saw me do this in the World Wide Web, and they're, they're like, again? Really? I have one friend. I, st- I started my current company 11 years ago, and I went out to lunch with this guy in Boston, and he worked for me at agency.com at the early web company. And I told him what I was doing with Storyvine. And, he, and he, we're like halfway through lunch, and he just looks at me and goes, Kyle, why do you keep doing this to yourself? <laughs> I don't know. When you get the ADD, you get a little obsessive on stuff. And when you say things as profound and home alone inducing as this AI stuff, um, I don't know. I can't imagine there any anything else I would rather be thinking about right now. I mean, seriously. It's like I think about it all, most of the day, which I know sounds just stupid. And you're like, well, wait, don't you have a life? Yeah, I have a life like trying to figure out how in the fuck this is going to change all of our lives. <laughs> That's my life right now. What's the best way to build a G- GPT chatbot there's too many sites and it's overwhelming let's go build one right now shall we oh wait yes waitlisted for a while shrinkflation for the small tootsie okay my friends and family think i'm crazy okay what's the best way to build a gpt chatbot so you can build them if you if you're a user of zapier which is an automation tool they just added a new thing called interfaces which is basically like web access web front ends to to the automations you build and in there they've got a bot maker but we're going to go over here we're going to go right now to po.com so if if you're new here that's the official chat gpt website that's microsoft's bing search engine that's got gpt4 sitting underneath it now and then po.com we're going to go play we're going to go make a bot so we're going to flip the camera then we're going to turn off the little 
Who's he? What's it? And then we're going to go over to Poe. So this is Poe. And so when you get to Poe, you got all this shit down the side. The first six things, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. The first six things are models. And then below that are bots. So there's a mid-journey bot. There's a bot called I Am Shakespeare. That's one I created that talks like Shakespeare. It, it only writes in iambic pentameter. It's pretty funny. Um, and then you can look at all your bots. So I'll go to all my bots. And I got a bunch of them in here. I got Jay-Z. I, got, I did a Ricky Bobby bot. <laughs> he just talks about racing. And if you ain't first, you're last. Uh, I did a Yoda bot. I did a Sling Blade bot. I did Emily Dickinson. All the little images of the of the bots I did in mid journey and I popped them in there. I did Mary Shelley, Virginia Wolf, I, my Angela. So, so I made a bunch. Okay. So how do you make a bot? You go to this little create bot button and you just name it. So you just, you know, name it like, uh, I don't know, like who might be interesting. Uh, 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 P P we Herman. <laughs> and then you make a description Oh, no spaces. And then you make a description. So like this is the Pee Wee Herman bot. And then you write a prompt. And so the prompt says, you know, you you are Pee Wee Herman and you make Pee Wee Herman jokes. And when people ask you questions, you respond in kind. So let me go show you one that I've written. We'll go find a fun one here. And what's cool is once I wrote one of these, you can actually have ChatGPT rewrite it for other characters. So we'll do Steve Jobs. So this is, if you go to poe.com slash I am Steve Jobs, that's this bot that I made. And the prompt is, um, you are Steve Jobs, the iconic co-founder of Apple Inc. and visionary leader in technology and business. Engage with users by sharing your passion for innovation, design, and leadership using authentic language and phrasing. Your responses should reflect your distinct drive for excellence and blah 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 as steve jobs your memory of your accomplishments and experiences is exceptional allowing you to provide examples but 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 right feel free to address the the feel free to address questions regarding the principles strategies and philosophies of your style keep these guidelines in mind keep the interactions brief unless a user asks you to provide in-depth mentorship do not say you work for apple in any way do not refer to your own death provide guidance. And and some of those tweaks are just tweaks I put in there after testing it, 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 it just got weird and kind of morbid, like, well, I'm dead now. And so, so, so that's just stuff I put in there. But now that I have that written, I can literally take that thing and say, rewrite this for Shakespeare, re rewrite this for some other author. And then, and then you basically do a little intro message and you hit save bot and then you're off to the races. You've built a bot. It's like super easy. It's a great way to practice your prompt crafting um, because when you build the bot then you start playing with it like it's a bot and if it's shitty then your prompt sucks and go back and fix your prompt and then test it again and then I just I love I love the thought of someone just scrolling through TikTok and they just watch me losing my fucking mind. <laughs> like, what is this? What is this? I think he might need some help. Should we send should we send resources? <laughs> Hope that helps. All right. What company is behind ChatGPT that I can buy stock shares? Well, I mean, I don't I don't think uh, OpenAI is publicly investable. Um, Microsoft is. Microsoft has rolled that shit across everything they're doing. They are in hard. So um, I am historically a Microsoft basher. Um, I'm an Apple fanboy from, from way back. Um, but the last six months, Microsoft has impressed the shit out of me with how quickly they're moving, how thoughtful their integrations of ChatGPT are into their stack. Um, and how much glee they're getting out of fucking with Google. <laughs> it's like it's like a cage match. Like, you know, it's going to be fun watching Elon and, and uh, Zuckerberg do the cage match. But watching Microsoft fuck with Google has been pretty fun. Um, like, I don't know who you should invest in. I mean, companies that I think are interesting, a lot of them you can't invest in. Um, Anthropic 
I think is really interesting. There are a bunch of ex OpenAI employees. OpenAI is ChatGPT. Um, Nvidia is making all the chips to to do all this. Like like the the amount of compute power when every company in the world decides they want to make their own large language model. Like the amount of you know Nvidia chips. Uh, AMD claims they're going to start competing with Nvidia, but. NVIDIA seems to have the, the market cornered for now. Um, it's not easy to spin up chip manufacturing. Um, who else is interesting? Mm. I mean, I don't think you can bet against Google, but they're definitely behind. But they're like big, have a lot of money, and they're really fucking smart people. So I wouldn't bet against Google. Um, I think Apple is going to be a beast in this arena, I think when Apple comes into the AI game, they're going to be able to offer privacy and security like no one else can fucking touch. Like, because they're going to be able to do all their large language model stuff locally on the chip, so they're not going to have to send things off. So they're going to be able to promise a level of privacy that I don't think anyone else can touch. So I think Apple's going to be big. Uh, Oh, got a couple of ADHDers in here. Yeah. Did you get your card laminated? Mine's laminated. I have an acrylic plaque. <laughs> Such a good club. I actually, as I've gotten older, I you know, I've just learned that, oh, you know, not only am I shitty at certain stuff and hate it, um, I'll never be good at it. Once you accept that, and then you go, oh, there's other shit I'm really good at, right? Once you accept that, it's it's actually kind of freeing. This is going to change my life. Um, Gen X. Oh, I love that commercial. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm back in old comments. Sorry. Old man trying to use TikTok here. <laughs> all right. Oh, wait, I'm all the way back to Paul asking me to read his question. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> All right. It's 6 a.m. I didn't sleep because of AI. People think I'm crazy. You are crazy, but, like, it's the only place, like, I, I woke up one night at 4 in the morning. Oh, this was wild. I woke up at 4 in the morning, and I thought, oh, I have a domain that I could use for AI. <laughs> and then I popped up, and, and I had an idea for a site that I could put on it. And then I went to Midjourney and I created an interface for it. And then I went into Illustrator and put a bunch of text on it. Like I built a whole interface for a whole business at like between four and five in the morning one morning. And then I went to be back to sleep before work. So I get it. I've been there. I'm uh, yeah. ADHD Dreamland. Oh yeah. It makes so much sense. Cool. I have ADHD too, and I'm listening to your live while folding laundry. Perfect. Yes, please multitask or just, you know, monotask or, you know, whatever you do. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, if you are new to this stuff, uh, go to chat.openai.com, play with ChatGPT until you have a Kevin McAllister moment. And if you don't know who Kevin McAllister is, I resent you because it means you're young and you don't have hair and facial situations going on like I do. <laughs> um, can the bots be on your website? They can, uh, but well, it depends what you mean by the bots. Can you put chatbots there? There's lots of tools to do that now. Um, you can do it with Zapier. Um, like the the I've been I've made some tools with Zapier where I just have a Google form, and then I capture the embed code for that Google form and put that into a website. But there's all sorts of ways you can get it in there. Um, so, so the answer is yes. You just need to dig around. If you're not a coder, either find a coder or just start looking up no-code tools like Zapier. There's one called Make. Um, I don't know. Look up no-code stuff. No-code stuff's good, but um, it it's still complicated. You work a lot, Kyle. I do. I do. But I like it. Like... Like work, like this kind of work is my hobby. And then if I can turn that into cash dollar, you can make money with Chacha Bay Tay. Mm. 
Yes, they can. I made four yesterday. FAQ bots, business oriented, cool. Security. Security is a problem right now. Um, if you're using ChatGPT, so if you're using GPT Playground and playing with their APIs, that's better. If you're using ChatGPT, you can turn off your chat history and your, uh, you can tell them not to train on your data, which helps. Um, but it will delete your chat history, so make sure you download your data first. Um, and then, and then there's just the the whole security thing is just a whole much deeper conversation. For big companies right now, where most big companies, even medium-sized companies are going to need to go is to have their own kind of standalone large language models that is trained on their data. Um, there's a thing called LangChain where you can do that. Um, or you might want to run open source models locally. There, there's, there's all sorts of issues with security. Um, a lot of these tools are very, very spit and duct tape right now, so you should know that. So, um, yes, learn more about that. I'm not a security expert, but they're basically, they're like Swiss cheese. They have holes all over them. So, um, Digital Danny thinks I'm cool. Awesome. Appreciate it, Digital Danny. How can we protect the conversation and information? Like I said, you can turn off your chat history and tell them not to train on it. That's the best way to do it. Or run things locally, like on your local machine or in a standalone virtual machine like Google Colab uh, or, or in Microsoft Azure. That's the, basically, you need to firewall the data in some way. But turning off your chat history and telling them not to train on it will help. Do they have, what was that question? And they have so much data. Yeah, so does Google. So does Facebook. We can listen. Like, like everyone's like, ah, oh, they're state. They're taking our data and they're training their bots on our data. Well, we gave our sh data to Google and Facebook, and Twitter, and fucking everything else. YouTube, Ancestry. dot com. We we uploaded our DNA to the internet. Um, our data is long since gone. Um, the scary thing with this AI stuff is. Now you got AI tools where you can synthesize that stuff like that. So that's the scary thing. Poster child for ADHD. Woohoo! ADHD is a superpower. I agree. Um, my, my buddy Peter Shankman wrote a book called uh, Faster Than Normal, which talks about the ADHD brain and how it's just like... Prrr! Well, not that part. The frontal lobe's basically a block of cheese that doesn't do anything. We have no executive function up here. But all the synthesis shit and the 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 the, the you know sort of the fast input shit. We're good at that. But uh, what was, what did I do the other day? I wanted to take in a, a my phone charger, which I had in my bedroom. So I woke up in the morning. I'm like, okay, gotta remember this. I took it down. I put it in the kitchen counter. And like and I, I kept putting it everywhere I went and then I, I went into the living room and I sat on a chair and I put it on the arm of the living room chair and I put on my shoes and I get in the car and I go to work and I don't have the charger <laughs> and I get home and it's on the it's on the armchair like it's you know the executive function thing just flush any expectations of that down the toilet and enjoy the rest of the shit that you're good at <laughs> uh, Workaholism is classic ADHD. It's a blessing. Love it. Yep, absolutely agree. Um, Flowwise is pretty neat. No code. Okay, I don't know Flowwise. I'll check that out. Is it expensive to run things locally processing power-wise? Well, um, not necessarily. If you've got an M1 Mac, if you've got like a MacBook Pro M1 or M2, um, there are some open source projects that run on those pretty pretty well. The The... The developer community for the open source models, they're doing all sorts of really interesting shit where they're, um, you know, compressing these models, making them smaller, pulling data out of them, but they still work. Um, so I'm pretty sure there was one that you could install on a phone locally and it would run. Um, you, there's definitely ones you can install on a Mac. Um, if you've got a PC with like a 3090 or better um, GPU, you can do some pretty intense processing. But they're starting to get these things to the point that you don't need you don't need really banger machines to do this anymore. Um, they're they're not going to be as powerful as as 
they're going to be probably just close to GPT 3.5. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be like GPT four. It it's just of another class. Um. So I would I would say just go start hanging out on Reddit in the in the um, subreddits for like large language models, open source large language models. There's a lot of projects. There's a project called GPT for all that's probably worth checking out because I'm pretty sure that's got an installer for Windows, Mac, and Linux that installs you know some local instance on your machine and then you can choose from different open source large language models to play with um that's why they will succeed chat is behind google may have my data they earned it i know that's i was i was bitching to a friend of mine that worked at google once about i don't know something gmail sucked at and he goes what did you pay for that and i'm like oh yeah if the product's free you're the product. <laughs> uh, M chips with their unified architecture was very forward looking. Yeah, I agree that the the, uh, the Apple's Apple's um, chip architecture. If you, if you paid attention to their um, Vision Pro announcement with the R1 chip, so they got the M2 chip on one over one eye and the R1 chip over the other eye. And the R1 chip is reading all the sensors on the thing. So it's doing real-time, like, machine learning shit. So they're doing all that machine learning stuff for those goggles on the device. Apple's going to fucking kill it with this AI stuff. All right. Looks like, looks like I've blown through the questions. I never answered Paul's question. But, Paul, I never saw your question. I don't know if you're still here. But, anyway, if you've got some questions, pop them in. It's getting a little late. I want to go watch The Bear. I've watched two episodes now of The Bear. It's friggin' awesome. Here's some TV show recommendations. It's Friday night. So, um, Drops of God, really good. The Bear is fucking incredible. It's just so good. Um, what else do we... If you haven't seen Ted Lasso, you have to see Ted Lasso. The, the, just, like, the three-season package, it, it starts out weird. You're like, why am I watching this show about an idiot redneck in England? And then by the third episode, you fucking love them all. Um, those are three good ones right now. De Bear, yeah, De Bear, in Chicago. De Bear had a dream of creating a site with multiple bots to focus group your docu- documents. That's a pretty cool idea. But I had a I had a idea for business today. What the hell was it? What the hell was it? Oh, it was just some sort of framework thing. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's like, the thing that's just amazing about these large language models is is you really can have a concept for a business. And rather than thinking about, oh, I need to get a developer, I need to do this, I need to do that. You can be prototyping it in ChatGPT or, or in Zappy or something like that within an hour. And it's like fucking world class. Like, it, it's just mind-blowing. This The speed with which you'll be able to take a, a raw business idea and spin it up is it was already fast like with site builders and you know no code tools but the the large language models just take it to a completely different level all right da, 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 da. ted lasso ted lasso is like a big warm hug or like a warm hug it is totally like a warm hug Ted Lasso soundtrack and lesson learned is so good. The dart scene, when 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 Ted is doing the dart scene about people underestimating him and not being curious, holy fucking shit. That's what this, this channel is about. Be curious. Go there and be curious. Go to prompts.chat. Figure out what this prompting nonsense is all about. Go start sticking, sticking them in there and get curious. And if you haven't seen the Ted Lasso scene where he talks about being curious and how people aren't curious, it's one of the best scenes in TV. It's so good. That scene is so good. It's such a fuck you to all the bullies. Oh, it's so good. Um, the Ultimate Queer Love is so good. Okay, I'll check that out. Um, any bot that can read a PDF. Well, yeah, there's, there's plugins that read PDFs. I use them all the time. That's one of the, that's one of, someone asked before about, are there any good plugins? There's not a lot, but there's one that I use called Ask Your PDF that works really good. And you can just, 
give it the URL of a PDF, it'll read it, and then you query against it. It's really good. But you need access to plugins, so that's the paid version of chat.openai.com. Bing has announced, Microsoft has announced that Bing will support ChatGPT plugins. So if you wait three months, six months, I don't know, Bing.com will be turning on plugins. And so you'll probably get to use them for free, is my guess. I'm a complete rookie. What's the best way for me to get started? That's why this channel exists. That's all of this. I'm like Carol Merrill. Remember Carol Merrill? Again. Gen X reference. What are you going to do? Old man on a TikTok. <laughs> what are we going to do, people? Um, okay, if you're brand new to this stuff, if you haven't heard of ChatGPT, now you have. It's a thing. You go. You get to it by just going to that website. Just go to chat.openai.com. It's basically just like a Google search bar, but instead of searching, you start interacting with this thing. And, it, and, and what I like to say is start with... Uh, parlor tricks and the parlor tricks are things like describe your significant other or your pet and have it write a country song about that person or a rap or a poem or whatever a short story and it will and then you'll go oh that's pretty good and then tell it to make a table comparing I don't know three different sports teams and it will and then you'll be like oh I didn't know I could do that <laughs> and then tell it to write some computer code and it will do that and then it's at some point you'll just go like Holy shit, like, what What do I actually do with this thing? Then, <laughs> once you get to the, this is intriguing now, I'm intrigued, go here to this thing, prompts.chat, and that'll teach you about prompting and kind of how these machines work and how they think. And then this is a giant long list of personas that you can give to ChatGPT. So act like a screenwriter, act like a mathematician, act like a travel agent, act like a whatever, a nutritionist. And you'll, you'll get a real sense of, oh, this thing like can kind of shapeshift. It can be lots of different things. And so this is, is not so much where you're going to learn to prompt, but this is what will inspire you to start thinking about, oh, maybe it can do this, maybe it can do that, maybe it can do that. So that's phase two. And then phase three is what's stuff that you're passionate about or what's a project that you're working on? And think of ChatGPT like, the most capable assistant you've ever had. Like, it's way smarter than you. It's, it's dumb in terms of life experience. You have to tell it everything. Like, okay, ChatGPT, now you're going to do this. So you have, to, you, you have to guide it. So you're the pilot, it's the co-pilot, but it's the smartest fucking co-pilot you've ever worked with. It's the smartest person you've ever worked with, by far. And then, and then start solving problems, right? So it could be a personal problem like, I want to eat better, so have it create a meal plan for the week with, with a new kind of diet. Um, it might be a work problem. Have it come up with a marketing plan for your business or have it help you solve, I don't know, some sort of customer problem. And then once you start sort of pinging it to, to solve stuff for you, at, at some point in there, you're going to have the Kevin McAllister moment. And then you're hooked. And then at that point, then you're up till six in the morning working on this stupid shit and you listen to me on these lives. <laughs> you join the fucking insanity club. Speaking of the insanity club, here, let me show you a group that I started full of insane people. No, full of actually just really cool people that are very curious about AI. So it's called the AI Salon. So if you go to the salon.ai, that's a link tree that will point you to our meetup. We meet every other week virtually and in person here in Denver. There's also a Discord server there. There's also a, also a LinkedIn group there. So go there. And then this thing is a newsletter that I do with my friend Greg Mushin called Everyday AI News. So that's our Twitter handle. So you can go there and we do cool tweet threads and shit like that. So anyway, welcome, complete rookie. What is your name, David? Desfahani, something like that. Cool. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the nightmare. It's going to be exciting, and then you'll be terrified, and then you'll be excited, and then you'll be terrified, and then you'll be excited, and then you'll be terrified, and then your friends will stop speaking to you, and then at some point, one of your friends will pull you aside and say, could you teach me a little bit about ChatGPT? And then you'll have a fun time with them, and then they'll be hooked too. It's going to go something like that. Or you play with it once and you're like, it made a mistake. It's stupid. I think it's a waste of time. This is just a hype cycle. You could be that guy. <laughs>
Later, skater. Thanks for streaming. You got it, Jim Buckley. Oh, cool. Hey, Jim. Uh, <laughs> oh, good Lord. All right. I'm going to go soon here. We live in amazing times. These are amazing times. I, I you know, on a, on a, as serious note as I can muster up, um, I feel so fucking lucky to be alive right now. Like, these are the most powerful tools in the history of humanity. Like, the internet was cool. But in the end, the internet was just like, here's some shit, here's some other shit, let's connect it. This stuff is like a reflection of humanity back in our face. <laughs> it's like... It's like a humanity amplifier. It is, it, 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 it's honest to God, like, it, it, I don't, I don't know. We're very lucky to live in this time. And if you, if you're lucky enough to get curious about this shit, get curious and curious and curious, it's going to serve you well. I promise you. The Cloud 100K is so, so, so much better than plugins. Yeah, the, the, the Cloud 100K um, thing is, is, it's a big deal. Carol Merrill. All right, some someone knows the Carol Merrill reference. Thank you, Silver Fox. <laughs> All right. One of us, one of us. Exactly. Kevin McAllister moments never stop. Exactly. That's what it's been like. Honest to God, the last six months for me since ChatGPT's come out, it's been six months of... Okay, the, the first three months, it was multiple times a day. It's slowed down a bit. So now it's five times a week. I'm doing this. No. <laughs> and then I go look at it, watch the video. Holy shit. Five times a week. It's insane. And sometimes it's just, I'll talk to someone and they're like, oh, here's how I use ChatGPT. And it's a way I never thought of it. That's the other thing. For, for those of you that are brand new to this shit, um, if, if, if they just stopped development of ChatGPT right now and you, and you just went to the free version of chat.openai.com, the 3.5 version, I confidently feel I could spend the next decade trying to figure out all the shit that that makes possible. Just that the next decade with no advancements and there's like advancements multiple times a week significant advancements multiple times a week we are in an exponential innovation curve right now where these tools are informing other tools and developers are taking what these two developers did and they're rolling it into their new product and then the next pair of developers is rolling it into theirs it's, it, it is insane what's happening right now so the Twitter handle, oh, that other Twitter handle, hold please, is my newsletter called Everyday AI. So that's the Twitter handle for Everyday AI News. We do tweet threads there. Like I, I just, the, the most recent tweet thread there yesterday, McKinsey came out with a big report on the future of generative AI and how much fucking money it's going to generate. It's like 4.2 trillion or I don't know. 3.4 trillion, I don't know, some stupid large amount of money. But it's in it's in the thread. Uh, 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 my photos are all screen recordings of you. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> They're coming to take me away. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, try living in this fucking brain. Um, all right, I got to go, everyone. Have a happy Friday night. Thanks for hanging out with me. Y'all are swell. And... Uh, yeah, stay curious. Go play with this stuff. I'll, I'll Let me scooch out of the way here. If you're new here, screenshot this or go grab some of that stuff. Have a good weekend, everybody. I'll probably be on tomorrow because this is what I do now. <laughs> good night, everyone. <laughs>